I am loving this new double bass warm up routine. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I have been loving Susan Hagen's new book of double bass warm-ups. It's titled Basics of Bass. We're digging into this with Susan. I'm going to play through these warm-ups and show how I'm using them, and I just totally love them. We've got a PDF version in our sheet music store. That's linked up in the description below, and you can also reach out to Susan directly for a physical copy. Let's dive into Susan's book. I am loving this approach. I have been working on my warm-up game for years and years, and this just really clicks with me. And she starts off with long tones, which are so important. One of the things I love about long tones, it's the day, it's the, it's the first thing of the day. You set what your sound is gonna be like. And that sound that you want, the one that you hear in your heads, the, the, that you think, this is what I wanna sound like, that's what you can aim for, right? But I like it because I'm not using my left hand yet. So I'm only focusing on my mechanics. Susan, as you start on the A or D string, I'll start on the D string here and just start about four beats for a bow, quarter note equals 60. And I would recommend actually putting the metronome on As you're doing this, divide the bow into four equal parts. That's what Susan tells you to do. So you can just picture 25, 50, 75, 100. And long tones, starting your day with them, it is just beautiful, 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 beautiful for your technique for so many reasons. For me, I do a lot of like moving from the big muscles of my shoulder. Down bows are from like the pecs and the deltoids, and the up bows are rhombus and del deltoids. And really using, I mean, the little nuances are the smaller muscles down in my forearm, wrist, and fingers. But I don't even tell my students that in the beginning. I say, let's do big muscles because otherwise I find they squeeze the stick and do these weird little cello motions that just don't work. With all of these exercises in Susan's great book, they can start off simple and get more complex. So after you're comfortable with four beats per bow, you can do five, six, seven, eight, the sky's your limit. Starting on the D string or the A string is great because it's just in the middle of the bass and you're not getting into the extremes yet. Stand as if you're hanging out with your friends, you don't have a bass in your hand, and you're swinging your arms, maybe walking down the street, swinging your arms, like in front and behind you, like how you walk. So it's sort of, you know, swinging your arms, walking down the street, and you notice it all goes from your shoulder. You're cranking out a lot of volume with an orchestra, loud, 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 and you get home, you go to sleep, and the next morning, you gotta do a reset. And you wanna have loose and relaxed so that your bass vibrates and resonates as much as possible. And each day you start with a clean slate of beautiful sound. <laughs> The next four exercises are part of Susan's warm-up quartet. They're the exercises that she does every day. If she has five minutes, she does them all and just kind of abbreviates them. If she has a half hour, she'll do them and extend them, but she does them every day no matter what. The rest of the exercises she'll do if she has time or she'll maybe mix them up, but these four are the core exercises. And the first one she calls Neener Neener, and she got the idea from her former teacher, Ed Barker. When I was a kid, he would call it left-hand chromatic warm-up which is completely exactly what it is. It's chromatic and it's a left hand warm up. But I noticed over the time of teaching, people would sort of get this sort of very detached, disinterested look on their faces. And I'd be like, okay, now let's start with the left hand chromatic warm up. And they'd be like, yeah, I didn't really practice that. And I'm like, hmm, what's going on here? And I thought it through and I talked to, to my mom, who's an incredible piano teacher. And I said to her, how come nobody ever wants to practice that? It's like the staple of my warm up. And she looked at me and she said, well, that's probably the most boring name I've ever heard in my entire life. And I wouldn't want to practice it either. And she said to me, is it that thing that sounds like neener, neener, nee? And she, she gave it the words. I learned this as Max's magic from Max Dimoff of the Cleveland Orchestra. I believe he called it rings thing so it's one of those exercises that has been in the bass vernacular for quite some time and I love it so much it starts off with this pattern one two four two one four two four and there's something about going this direction kind of like this rolling 
motion, this pronation motion, one, two, four, two, followed by a little bit more of, I don't want to say necessarily typing motion, but a little bit more of that because you go one, four, two, four. So those two motions. <laughs> I find so wonderful to warm up on the bass. Just like everything in here, Susan has you start slow, so she marks quarter note equals 60. And she starts you on the G string. It's such a great way to start because you're starting on the thinnest string and we are warming up. We're trying to get going slowly. So if you start on the E string, that's a little bit of a heftier string. And then we slide between the notes slide with the juiciest schmear between the two notes that you could ever imagine. And they'll do it and everyone's like, that was really gross. I'm like, oh no, it could be grosser. And the reason why is if you're schmearing between your notes, I wish the word was slide and not shift. If you're really sliding, your ear is gonna hear where you're headed. If you hop or lift and shift or anything that makes you lose contact with the string, I mean, you're, it's a wing and a prayer to see if you're going to land in tune. You hear the distance between the notes, you land in tune more frequently, and then your brain can get that measurement. Another cool thing about this exercise is that, yes, you can start down in half position, but Susan describes how she oftentimes will start up here and go the other way. I love it because you can start in half position, and the shifts are going to be to higher pitches so gravity is helping push your hand down on the fingerboard. Or, if you don't like starting with the biggest stretch in your entire hand for your whole day, you start on like, I start on C sharp because on all three of my bases, if I start on D, that it just starts getting a little squishy on the, the fourth finger area. So I start on C sharp, notes are nice and close together. I don't mind fighting gravity on my shifts because my hand is more comfortable to start with. Um, I have students that prefer to start on C or, you know, there's no wrong way to do it. And the sky's the limit with varying this exercise. You can go fast or slower, but starting out slow to start your day, it's such a beautiful thing. Almost without fail, people usually play them faster than they need to. And if you play them a little slower, you can remember to save time for yourself to breathe, which also helps get like, you know, the oxygen into your body and helps keep your muscles relaxed and preventing you from passing out and things like that. Then we get into the next exercise of these core four exercises, the tightrope. I call it the tightrope because um, just like Neener Neener, the playing with your left hand is on the G string. Thinnest string, easiest to warm up with, safest way to start your day. But this tosses in an open D every now and then. So I imagine a tightrope walker is bouncing on the G, bouncing, and then woo, he droops down over the D and your heart goes into your mouth, you're like, ah! and then he goes back up to the G again. Here's how the tightrope lays out on the bass. So there's that second finger shift. So for this one, we're working on the second finger shift. For near near, it was first finger shift. Like these other exercises, there is a turnaround as you get to the top of the pattern and you can flip it around. But like Susan described, you don't have to do that. If you find that confusing, you can modify these exercises to suit your needs and where you are on the bass. Some people, the turnaround, they're like, yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And other people are like, I can't even, I can't fathom it. It just, I can't get my head wrapped around it. So I realized over time, omit it if it doesn't help you. If it's a hindrance, just get rid of it. We don't need it. Here I was done with grad school and thinking, I still have holes in my playing. I have little gaps that need to be filled. So all of the rest of these exercises, I wrote them for myself. Here's how learning sits on the bass, and I am going to do it separate bows, but you can absolutely do it slurred in many variations as well. I made words for it. Yes, you are learning this. Yes, you are learning this. And they laugh, and then they practice it, and then the pattern makes sense, and everybody wins. And this one has a shift from second finger to first finger. Again, it's a half-step shift. Everything is still chromatic. And 
you can do slurs. I have slurs written in, but you can, I have three notes slurred and then three notes slurred the whole way. <laughs> my body as I do this. What you think about and what you focus on is so important, as important or more important probably than the notes are playing. So I love the way that Susan lays these out, starting with the long tones, getting the first finger going in the shifts, the second finger going in the shifts, and just adding one new variable now going from the second finger to the first finger, still half steps. Great way to just get oriented on the bass and get your body going at the beginning of the day. It starts just on the G, but halfway through this one, we get to visit the D and the A and the E strings briefly. I want to visit the other strings. I don't want it to be an extended time period yet. I'm not fully warmed up yet. The last of the quartet is Jarl. You are really learning. I love that name. I link this into the next one called You Are Really <laughs> Learning, which is like almost the same pattern, but it has one more note. You are really learning this. And one of my students hates it because there's seven notes in the measure. Here's Jarl with that uneven note grouping. I think is pretty cool. <laughs> the other exercises she turns it around like she describes we go down and briefly touch these other strings so now we're getting around the bass we're practicing four to one shifts so we're learning all these moves that we need to do on the bass and do do on the bass all the time introducing them step by step gradually and giving yourself chance to think about tone and grace on the bass and elegant gestures like David Allen Moore describes just a really healthy way to start out your day Susan does a great job introducing thumb position, neener, neener. There's so many different ways to introduce thumb position and we can really go down the rabbit hole on this. I will link in the description below to some resources on developing thumb position, but this is a great intro and just a wonderful way to get going with it. So like how neener, neener has three pitches to it, the thumb position version starts with three pitches. And I say starts with because it does get more advanced. Um, you'll use your first finger, your second finger, and your third finger. And thumb... What happens is, for those that aren't used to using their thumb yet, I just say, let it rest somewhere on the string. In over a week or two, we find the perfect spot where they have like the fleshiest part of their thumb. Not playing on the fingernail, not playing on the, the knuckle, just sort of finding the meat and resting it. And as they shift, it's gonna gently drag on the string and it's gonna build a little callus so that when this version of Neener Neener is really good and they're ready to start using their thumb, the callus is there. They have figured out where the contact point on their thumb is gonna be. So here's version one of Neener Neener in thumb position. <laughs> Like Susan describes, this is a great way to get going, just introducing the thumb on the string like that without actually using it. Then we get into version two and you actually do use the thumb. A little shift on the thumb. And so on and so forth. And then version three introduces a different pattern because we're now using thumb one, two, and three. So we have a few extra notes. Such a cool way to get into it. Here's three birds and how that sits on the bass. One of my students, oh gosh, probably maybe 10 years ago, he helped me write it. And um, it kills three birds with one stone, which actually now sounds really vicious. But the expression of killing two birds with one stone, doing two things with one action, this actually has that same type of thing and it has, you know, chromatics and it's a warm up and you've got string crossings. <laughs> Finger 
in kind of a replacement. Or actually, not kind of, a replacement. And like Susan describes, you can do different bowings on this and different slurs and just a really wonderful exercise with lots of expandability, getting these other skills, these other coordinations that you need on the base down. Very cool. The snake is simple, but it is beautiful and it works on finger replacements, which are so critical on the base. So here's how the snake sits. <laughs> Turn it around. Such a great way to connect these positions and I love that replacement motion that is something we have to do all the time on the base and getting that in your warm routine is so helpful. And the last one in here is the sloth and it kind of has different string crossings with it and I thought that the name sloth would just remind everyone, don't go fast. The sloth is a great name, yeah, go slow. That's my problem, as I'm playing through this, I'm noticing I'm going too fast. So slow down, Jason, a little less caffeine, Jason. That's a really, really neat way to get around the base. And I have been loving these warm-up exercises. Obviously, Susan is a master teacher and has given so much thought to this step-by-step -step approach to warming up. Since I've been doing this, I've been feeling more alert and confident and ready to go when I go in and play my gigs. Highly recommend it. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.